which it flows in. Wonderful people, allow the Lord to be your saving strength in good times and in bad times, in times of plenty and in times of diminution. Like the water on the wall, we go and if there were worse in Egypt land, there seemed to be no hope of their release from injury. But the mighty and hard are the precipices and against the people. God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He will hide us in his pavilion and in the innermost parts of his heart. His love will continue to overflow for us. Like water on the so never be perplexed by the rudiments of this world. Trust in God, worship God, and watch His miracles come to pass. We will never lose hope. We will never stop believing, and we will continue to hold fast. A measure of wheat and a measure of barley, a signet of gold and a cluster of precious stones. Your all a valuable gifts, but the measure of God's love for us surpasses them all. Amen. Our opening hymn comes from the Red Hymnal, hymn number 204, 204. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Thank you. Be our saving strength in this world and for 
knowing that you know something that nobody else knows. And how long do you think you can keep the secret? Are you holding a secret for someone and you know that it is a top secret and one slip of the tongue could land that person in jail or turn them away from their family and friends? Are you holding a secret this morning? In 2018, I took my son to see his family, his Lebanese side of his family in Maryland. And the neighbors next door, she was expecting a baby and didn't want where we stayed, Joe's family, to know. So I made friends with them, I'm the stranger, and she said to me, don't tell anybody. And I promised her I would not tell them that she was having a baby. She wanted it to be a surprise for as long as she could keep it. So what do you think I did? I went inside, and during dinner I said, I have a secret. <laughs> that was 2018. You thought I knew that. Your neighbor is having a baby. And Joe looked at me and he said, Mom, didn't she just tell you not to tell anybody? I said, I know, I know, but it's a nice secret and I can spill the beans. And the next day, they went next door. Are you having a baby? Ouch. <laughs> and the next morning, I saw her standing outside. I could not say hello. I had spilled the beans. And I know I'm not the only one. Some of you have spilled the beans. You may not say it is true. So that was me. And I learned from that day when somebody, well, I knew that. When somebody tells you a secret, you have to keep it a secret. So we know that after the death, and burial and resurrection of Jesus, his brother James, he became fully converted to the gospel. And he became the head of the first Christian church in Jerusalem. Yes, Jesus had biological brothers and sisters. If it's one thing we're going to learn here today, and we can pick that up in Mark chapter 6, verse 3. Mary and Joseph had more children. They had James, the second born. He wrote the epistle of James in your Bible. They had Joseph Jr. and another son named Judas. He was the youngest son. The Bible says, there was also Simon, and then he had sisters. It does not tell us how many sisters there were, but it's sisters with an S. So we know at least there were two. So if we can count the household of Jesus, there were seven people in that house. So James, the brother of Jesus, was a man of great authority. He wrote the epistle of James. He wrote to the Jewish people, or the Christians, who were scattered abroad. And as a way of guiding them on how to go about living the Christian life, he encouraged the Christians that they should live soberly, they should exercise patience, and if they needed wisdom, they should ask God for wisdom. They should walk in faith. They should be firm in their stand for Jesus. In other words, don't say, I believe in Jesus today. And the moment you walk out the door and hear any negative talk about the risen Lord, to turn away from believing and become part of the unbelieving world. James was 
just trying to reassure the early Christians that they should not let their faith in Jesus be like the waves of the sea, wavering from side to side, driven with the wind and be tossed. He wanted them to be teachers of the word, be teachers of the word, but remember to speak the truth when you teach, and be careful of the words that come out of your mouth. Be mindful of the words, because one day you'll have to give an account for the words that you say. I stand here every Sunday morning, and I say to you that someday I have to give an account of what I say. Someday when I get before the judgment throne, I will be asked questions that I have to answer. And now James is saying to his fellow Christians, be mindful of what you teach, because you too, you are human beings. We are all capable of making mistakes, and we have all seen and come short of the glory of God. None of us are without fault, and we must pray that God will guide our tongue. We know that a jockey can get a horse to obey him by putting bits and a bridle on the mouth. A captain of a ship can guide the ship, however large it may be, with the use of a rudder, which is not very big at all. But for a tongue, who can guide this? Who can control the tongue in our mouth? You can pay someone to keep your mouth shut, but it is guaranteed that they may talk. One little spark can set a whole forest on fire, and in like manner, the tongue in our mouths can be disastrous. James compared the human tongue to a flame of fire. He wrote that the human tongue in our mouths, it is so flammable that it exists among the other members of the body as a whole universe of mouths. I'm not sure if I like that. The tongue defiles the entire body, and if you don't believe it is true, try to remember the time when someone told a really bad lie about you and how you felt. The tongue can be so, so dangerous, and its flames can encircle the course of our lives. The tongue can be so dangerous, its flames encircle our course from birth. From the moment we were born, it was with us, and its fire is kindled by hell. Now that's really strong words. Not my nice tongue. But that's what the Bible says. It is a restless evil. It is compared to poison oaks and viper's tongue, for viper is a deadly snake. And James preached that every animal on the planet, every four-footed and every winged animal those who are crawling and the animals who are swimming, they can be tamed. And it has been, they have been tamed by mankind. But the tongue in our mouth, who can tame the tongue? It is a restless evil filled with deadly poison. Christian friends, this is not a good description of our tongue. Be mindful about what we say about others. In our world today, there are about 6,500 languages spoken. And speaking your language, our tongue plays a vital role in speaking. Without the tongue, we cannot say one word. We use our tongue to say praise be to the Father and Lord. Then we use 
proceed to curse one another, even if they were made in the likeness of God. We use our tongue to curse one another in traffic. I'll let that pause. <coughs> Especially in rush hour, if you are in the car by yourself, I don't know how Christian you think you might be, but provided you are in the car by yourself and someone cuts you off, you're going to say something. Am I the only one? <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> Blessings and curses come out of the same mouth. And today as Christians, I know that we are in control of our tongue, right? right. So I'm thinking this epistle of James chapter 3, it's not for us. We're just going to talk about it. It's not for us, right? <laughs> we don't do that. We don't curse, right? We speak a blessing to those who cuts us off in traffic, right? We speak nicely of our neighbors and our friends. Yes? We speak nicely about our friends, our brothers, and our sisters in church. Right? Right. We are kind to our family, our parents, <coughs> mothers-in-law and father-in-law. We are nice to them. We don't say anything bad about them, right? <coughs> I'm going to cough. I had a mother-in-law once. Okay. Okay, once. James warned the early Christians to be mindful of their tongue. But we know that throughout the years, humanity has never changed. There are still many who just cannot keep a secret. But before we talk badly about a friend or a neighbor or a church member, let us all think before we speak. Let us bear in mind that a water fountain or a river does not have bitter waters and refreshing waters at the same time. <laughs> An apple tree cannot bear cherries. As human beings, we all have our flaws and imperfections, but let us all remember that we cannot speak ill things about one another. We are equipped with the grace of God. Let us think before we curse, even if it's on the tip of our tongue. Use our tongue to always speak the truth. As Christians, we always speak the truth, right? And in all practicality, let us speak a blessing <coughs> on our friends. When was the last time you blessed your children or your child? Every day we wake up, we should speak a blessing on our children, even if they don't call you on Mother's Day. We should speak a blessing on our grandchildren, if you have them, and blessings on your great-grandchildren, even if they might be in prison, even if they might be under some form of substance abuse, they may not be the kind of children that you thought they were going to be, but your job as a parent is to continue to speak blessings on your children. Speak a blessing on your neighbor. <clears throat> Even when they walk the dog on your side of the lawn, speak a blessing on the people at work. Speak a blessing on the people in traffic. But above all, let us all continue to use this little member in our house to praise God. Amen? Amen. 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 Our second hymn comes from the Black Hymnal. 
Hymn number 505, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
and he will lead us to paths of righteousness. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Father, this morning we share a token of our love with you. And we pray that all that we offer you, you will accept and bless for us. Keep us all in the spirit of love. Keep us all united with one love and one spirit, that someday we will get to see you face to face as we continue our journey here on earth. Keep us always together, one with each other. Amen. 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 Please be seated. This is the moment in worship when we get to share our joys and our concerns. Does anyone have anything? Yes, ma'am. For the people of Ukraine and Russia and Korea, and for peace on earth. Bob is home. Bob is home. And Bob is home from his trip too. them all 
treasured up in vials in heaven. In your time and in due time, all prayers will be answered. So for those who have lost hope, I pray this could be their hope. We remember those who are hungry. We always pray for the homeless. We pray for those who are seen impaired, hearing impaired, and speech impaired. We pray for those who are in prison. We pray for those who have no idea where the next meal is going to come from. Father, we believe that red and yellow, black and white, we are all precious in your sight. Erase every doubt of prejudice. Erase every doubt of fear in our minds. And give us the courage to look at one another and refer to each and every one as a child, a precious child of God. We pray for our church here in Pembroke. Father, those who work constantly behind the scenes to make Sunday come to pass, Sunday worship. Bless those who could not be here this morning. And those who are watching and will be watching via YouTube. To our senior members here, our deacons, our trustees, and everyone who works, our organists, those who sing, everyone who is sitting here this morning is precious in your sight. We lift up in prayer the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, North and South Korea. We pray for peace on earth. We pray for Christy and Sarah, for Joni and Henry. We pray for Harriet's family, for Frida and Paul, for Tom, and for Bob, bringing him back to us safely. Father, when all else have failed, let us always turn to the prayer that you taught your disciples how to pray. When we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. from the Red Hymnal. And as you sing, I want you to pay special attention to the words. It's a battle hymn. It's the devil going up against the power of God. And we are just hanging in the middle. It's a theme of hope. It's a theme of praise. Let us sing 363, A Mighty Fortress is our God.
benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee, one way of one way of I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, until we meet again. Go now in peace, you are in the Spirit of God. Thank you.